This week on Engineering Newswire, we're growing a new foot, advertising on toilet paper, and saving Tesla's lab. Advertising is officially inescapable as startup firm Star Toilet has begun littering our precious rolls of toilet paper with Calvin Klein models filling their pockets with ad dollars as others fill their porcelain thrones. New York brothers Brian and Jordan Silverman intend for their two-ply concept available with scannable QR codes to show up in a public bathrooms in restaurants, offices, and stadiums. The paper is made from 100% recycled materials, and an Illinois company prints the ads using a soybean-based ink that is said to be safe for both users and septic systems. Hopefully, for the sake of us all, that ink doesn't run. Nikola Tesla's Wardenclyffe lab was recently threatened with permanent closure, but thanks to overwhelming underground support, Friends of Science East has raised well over $1 million to buy and restore this historic engineering landmark. Have you heard of Nikola Tesla? Of course you have! You're engineers! You know, the creator of the induction motor, the father of alternating current, Tesla! This guy is probably the most underrated engineer of all time. But why? Well, it has to do with the American dream. We seem to prize business sense over innovation, capital game over societal advantages. Don't get me wrong, knowing how to handle your cash flow and having an intelligent CEO is important. It keeps all of us employed, doesn't it? But where is the line from production to innovation, profits to progress? When you have money without innovation, we stop progressing. Tesla had several inventions that never went into production because they were deemed unprofitable or bad for business. But if he had been allowed to innovate, we may very well have had free power and a train that could travel the circumference of the earth in a matter of hours. It's a fine line to walk, but we need to remember that money is only worth the value we give it, while the need for progress far exceeds anybody's bank account. After bone cancer took the second half of his left leg, C.J. Howard went on to set amputee world records in the half marathon. In 2008, he met engineer Mandy Ott, who introduced Howard to rock climbing, which was easier on his stump than running. His prosthetic foot didn't play well with the special shoes needed to battle a mighty crevasse. So Ott flipped open her laptop and quickly created an aggressive new climbing shoe prosthetic that resembled a banana. Using direct metal laser sintering, Howard's new foot was grown in 20 micron layers using commercial grade titanium powder to make his new limb lightweight and super strong. Quick, cut something off! Or, no, no, no joke, it was really just heartwarming. Ann Arbor, Michigan will be the platform for a giant experiment involving 2,800 cars, trucks, and buses that will communicate with each other in hopes to lead to safer roads. Wireless devices will allow the vehicles to send signals to each other, warning drivers of potential dangers and even changing traffic lights if no cars are approaching the intersection. The U.S. Department of Transportation and the University of Michigan are hoping the year-long $25 million project proves that the devices can cut down on traffic crashes. Hopefully, the new devices will also alert sleep-deprived mothers to objects behind the car. Sorry, Annabelle. Mama owes you a new scooter. Are you one of those nostalgic types? Ever wish your iPad could be more like the typewriters of old? Well, this is your answer. The iTypewriter doesn't make any sort of data connection with your iPad. Instead, the device acts just like an old-fashioned typewriter, with arms that reach and touch the iPad as your fingers would. A tricky process, since old typewriters only struck the paper in one place, while the iTypewriter taps the iPad on-screen keyboard. That familiar resonant clack of every letter of your literary meanderings can be heard as the capacitive cap, which imitates the conductivity of your finger, hits the screen. Doesn't that just defeat the purpose of touchscreen technology? A nine-person jury of tech novices unanimously agreed that Samsung infringed on a series of Apple's mobile device patents. Most analysts believe that the verdict sends a threatening message to device makers after the jury ruled that Samsung products violated patents on everything from pinch to zoom gesture to uh, rectangular shape with rounded edges. The damages present less than 2% of Samsung's annual revenue, but instead of cutting a check and parting ways, the company is ready to appeal the decision all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court. Forget the 11 other patents, Apple just laid claim to an entire shape. For PD&D TV, I'm Megan Zimba and this has been your Engineering Newswire.